This is another edition of Head On. Hello, I'm Ian Holmes. Caledonia Park has been a lightning rod of criticism against the city of Nanaimo, also the VR Raiders football team. It's deteriorating condition, very aging facility. The grandstands insufficient, dressing rooms nowhere near up to par. And a push is being made within the local football community, Raider fans, players, the organization for something to be done at Caledonia Park. We'll delve into the issue. Also a couple of other City of Nanaimo Parks related issues towards the end of the broadcast as well. And uh, two uh, gentlemen uh, uh, very qualified to speak to the issue. We have Jeff Ritchie. He is the senior manager of parks for the city of Nanaimo. Also, Dom Abassi, play-by-play voice of the VI Raiders and a former VI Raider himself. So he's got a lot at stake uh, in this issue. I'll start with you, Jeff. Caledonia Park, everybody knows that uh, it's deteriorating. It's seen its better days. What needs to happen uh, to fix up uh, Caledonia, home of the Raiders? Well, thanks, Ian. Um, well, we've got a lot of uh, issues there, as you know. Uh, we've got we're currently working on a plan to uh, upgrade the facility. This plan involves a lot of input from different groups. The VI Raiders, uh, we've spoken to and met with many times, but I think we need to involve other user groups in a project of this size. We've tried to address some short-term issues to help the Raiders out this season recognizing uh, whatever we do in the long term is going to take a little bit of time. But we do have a plan we want to bring forward to council. It'll have to be addressed at that level uh, as part of their uh, all, all the different priorities that they face. All right, and where, where does that plan stand uh, specifically right now, Jeff? Um, we've, we're developing it right now. Ian, I'd, I'd like to say it'll go to council uh, in the next month or two. I think it's uh, really important that we bring it forward, staff brings it forward. But as we get into the details, uh, there just seem to be other issues and uh, things we need to consider. So uh, it's going to take a little bit of time, but I know uh, the Raiders are impatient and others, and so we, we want to keep it moving forward. Right, and uh, Dom Abassi here, uh, part of uh, the Raiders camp. Uh, Dom, it's you call all the Raider games from Caledonia. What are some of the pressing issues, and what ultimately would you like to see for a new facility for the Raiders? Well, I could be selfish and say I'd love to see a brand new press box and some new broadcast <laughs> locations for myself, but I think that's certainly a, a far down the list. For me, the number one issue right now is the fan experience. And when fans come to Caledonia Park, the grandstands, they're just not what they need to be. Um, you know, we were chatting before and, and they, they date back to, you know, the 1950s or 60s. So simply walking up and down the stairs at Caledonia Park inside the grandstands is a, a bit of a tricky a proposition. They're not built for having a large amount of people in them. And then you think about the game day setup from an organizational standpoint, it takes hours and hours for volunteers to drag speaker equipment and sound equipment across the field because of the way that it's just not set up to have PA systems and, and announcements for the crowds and things like that. So that's the number one thing for me is, is the fan experience for them to be able to come to a beautiful facility and grab a beer, grab a hot dog and go and sit down in a nice comfortable seat and have a nice sight line of the game. And then the other thing which has become a league mandated issue now is the facilities for the, the visiting team. Uh, home team aside, and then the fact the Raiders the dressing room is leaves a little bit to be desired. It's it's the away teams that have really are the ones that make a lot of noise, and now the league has gotten involved and started to put pressure on the Raiders that these teams traveling to Nanaimo aren't getting what they need to be prepared for competition. The Rotary Bowl is something that you brought up, Jeff, and this has been long batted around uh, VR Raiders and, and Stephen Nanaimo circles. Is that a, a potential option? Maybe forget Caledonia altogether and look towards uh, a Rotary Bowl as a, a potential permanent home for the VR Raiders? Yeah, it's uh, definitely a potential. I think we need to look at both sites. I think part of the, the problem we've had in the past is we've started to talk about the Rotary Bowl, which is owned and maintained by the school district, and uh, we, we start to talk about upgrades to Caledonia, which is the city of Nanaimo, and, and we seem to be spinning our wheels. I think, though, you have to consider that site as well. It's an excellent uh, potential site, but then we involve uh, other groups like the Track and Field Club, which has been there a long time and invested a lot of time and effort in there. I'm not saying it can't work, though. I mean, if we, we have looked around at other facilities, and I think of Langley, where the Raiders go and play, or Kamloops, they have tracked uh, facilities 
combined with. So I think whatever we bring forward in a plan, we, we have to look at that site and we have to work with school district and see how we can make some progress. Uh, Caledonia is still a possibility. Uh, it's uh, totally city of Nanaimo. But uh, is that where we want to invest all our money? I don't know. And I know in talking to the Raiders uh, recently, they certainly would consider that location as well. Hmm. So given the, the city of Nanaimo's uh, attention is here, you guys are tugged and pulled in so many different directions in terms of funding. It puts you guys in a different spot, difficult spot, Jeff. So my next question is, is the value of Caledonia Park. If we pour money into that facility, get a new grandstand and really fix that facility, new dressing rooms, is there a case to be made that yes, this is where we can pour our dollars into? And Dom, I'll start with you. What is the value of Caledonia Park to the city of Nanaimo? Well, I think it, it could be exponential. I mean, it really, the sky's the limit for a site like that because the Raiders are not looking for the city to pour money into a facility for them. It's not about that. The Raiders are a part of this sporting community that is uh, strong and vibrant and what they would love to see is a facility that serves every purpose that minor league teams minor league soccer can go in their track and field if, if that were to be part of it as well all that being rolled into one amazing facility that's the dream and I think that's the vision and the value of a facility like that uh, I mean it, it could do wonderful things for this city since 2006 the VI Raiders have hosted two national championships and two CJFL semifinal games. These are national Canadian level games where teams from Edmonton, Saskatoon, Hamilton coming to our city. And a lot of these families that travel with their sons and, and to watch these games, they might not get a lot of chance and a lot of time to experience Nanaimo as a city and get to love it the way that we do. So when they see Caledonia Park and that's it, that's their only experience, this is what they're taking away with them when they go back to their homes across the city. What kind, of, across the country. what kind of flack does the city get for the condition of Caledonia, Jeff? What kind of things well, have you heard? Recently, quite a bit. Yeah. Uh, a lot of people have commented, a lot of people from out of town, which is disappointing. I mean, we, we share what Dom is saying. We have a vision of uh, a facility, the, the beauty of Caledonia. It, it's a ticketed facility. We don't have many like that. We uh, have talked with the uh, youth soccer, now the Harbor City Football Club, they're working really hard with the White Caps and trying to do exactly what the Raiders do with the BC Lions. Uh, Baseball is doing the same thing, you know, having the Blue Jays here recently for a camp kind of thing. So we, we do uh, see a real potential for that kind of a facility. And I, I think the more people we involve, the better. We're not going to mm -hmm. be able to do it alone with the Raiders, and I think they realize that too. So uh, Harbor City football club, uh, field lacrosse is emerging sports, so there are a lot of other groups that we want to kind of include in this. Well, we're definitely in agreement on the potential for the site. I mean, it's a beautiful spot. The mm -hmm. eastern yeah. fringe is there at Bowen Park, the trees over top, uh, the way that the sun kind of glistles down uh, on the leaves. I mean, it's a, it's a nice, just a nice place to be. I mean, yeah. certainly in the future, I mean, there, there's, this needs to be utilized a, a, as some form of green space that a good, you know, solid gathering point for the city moving ahead. Yeah, I don't think it has anything to do with the location. I mean, it's fantastic. <laughs> I've been in there. I've played a, I've played in a national championship on that field on a, on a November day, and I will never forget the scenery and that the, the scene and the vision of that park is burned in my mind. It, it was just absolutely fantastic. And it, it's a gorgeous venue for football. It's in a nice tucked in bowl. Uh, people can drive along the streets and kind of honk their horns as they go by. And you even get the people uh, go looking for the cheap seats that sit up on the hill behind Calorie and Park too. So there's a, a lot of history that's been built in that park as well, not just for the Raiders, but for the sporting community in Nanaimo. So the location is fantastic. It's the infrastructure that needs help, but unfortunately that stuff all costs money. We'll look forward to that report, Jeff, coming up at Nanaimo City yeah. Council next month or two, as you mentioned. Uh, moving on to uh, the ENN Trail, a very popular uh, walking, jogging, yeah. cycling corridor uh, through Nanaimo along uh, the, the train track. You're, you're saying that there's a possible extension uh, to this uh, well-used corridor, Jeff. The ENN uh, Trail, possible extension. What can you update, update wow. our viewers on that? Well, I just wanted to comment. It was Councillor George Anderson brought a notice motion forward on Monday night, and it's coming, I think, to the next council meeting just addressing the e and Trail and further extension uh, for pedestrian cyclists uh, along the rail corridor. We have been working on developing and extending the e and Trail. Uh, further south has been our main priority and we're trying to 
focus on areas uh, at a less cost, I guess, or least cost, but uh, obviously there'll be issues with the rail crossings and that kind of thing where, where our costs go up. The Kearney and Entrails, 11 kilometers from uh, Mostar Road right to almost Caledonia Park. Uh, it's a great commuter trail. You'll see people on it cycling, walking. It's a three meter wide asphalt trail. That would be the standard we'd want to maintain throughout the southern part of the city and connecting as much as possible. So we do have some uh, conceptual plans to do it. Uh, in the past, when we were successful with the different phases we did uh, towards the north, we did get, kind of, I think it was green funding money or community uh, uh, funded uh, funds for that from the federal or provincial government, I can't remember. It was about 10, 15 years ago. I, this will need, I think, senior government, yeah. federal, provincial support. Yeah, this has come a long way. The pedestrian uh, links in Nanaimo with uh, the Parkway Trail and now uh, the Ian N Trail around for several years now. It's important for moving people from north to south. And Dom, you look at the geography of Nanaimo, a long and narrow city. I mean, anything you can do to you know, make it easier for people to get around uh, the city with the geographics of Nanaimo, I'm, I'm sure it is, is a positive thing. Well, you said it. It's a long and narrow city. Exactly. So, and it's not realistic for people to do business in one part of Nanaimo. You don't hear of people saying, oh, well, I live downtown, I work downtown, that's it. I do everything there. No, people live in North Nanaimo. They head to, to downtown and South Nanaimo to work and, and vice versa. So you have to find a way that people can move easily along that trail. And the reality, I think, nowadays is that gas is so expensive. Exactly. Parking is going to get more and more at a premium in, in the downtown core where people are working. You need to have a way that people can commute in other ways and biking is becoming a huge thing across the world especially here in Nanaimo and uh, bikes on roads and cars it's not a great mix so finding a, a nice place where people can bike and have that as, as a viable option to get from one end of town to the other well that's uh, that says a lot of great things about your city on the e n trail Jeff you're saying that there's the, the potential to go down to, to 10th Street that that's getting well, pretty that, deep that into heroin as, 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 a, as a possibility it's a possibility yeah. I think there's easier stretches like fifth to seventh people walk that it's pretty flat it's pretty level so the costs aren't aren't as bad but there are some areas to, out that way that are very difficult so if we can kind of combine it with some of the streets and that and make it as safe as possible for commuters uh, cyclists i think that would be really important so that that would be our strategy jeff uh, before we go uh, just let our viewers know a little bit more about this volunteers in parks program this is a pretty initiative uh, a neat initiative for people uh, to to generate tra change in their own neighborhoods in terms of their their own neighborhood parks what can you say about that yeah thanks and actually we're really proud of this program uh, it brings the community together so we'll get a neighborhood come together with a new uh, piece of land that's been dedicated through development and we can uh, expand it and put in a, a playground which has been traditionally what's happened but in recent years, it's been used for our disc golf that we have at uh, Bowen Park. Uh, we've used it to develop a batting cage out at May Richards Bennett Park. That was a volunteer and parks program. Mm -hmm. uh, so a lot of different uses. The community gardens uh, recently, Bevan Park, for an example, was funded through that volunteer and parks program. Uh, so we have got a lot of different uses uh, through that program, and it's uh, supported by the Parks, Recreation, Culture Commission. And people can find out more information on the city website, Definitely, Jeff? Definitely, yeah, yeah. All right, excellent. Jeff Ritchie, uh, Senior Manager of Parks at the City of Nanaimo. Dom Mabassi, play-by-play voice of the VR Raiders, breaking down some parks-related issues here in the City of Nanaimo with uh, the primary issue at hand being the condition of Caledonia Park. And it's looking like someday there's going to be a potentially a <laughs> new home for the VI Raiders at the BC Football Conference. Uh, let's see if that can be uh, fast-tracked somewhat. I know the Raiders have been very patient in that regard. Uh, Jeff, Dom, thanks so much for coming on the program. Thanks, thanks for having me. That's, that's another edition of Head On here on Shaw TV. I'm Ian Holmes, delving into the issues that really matter here on Mid Vancouver Island. <laughs>